Buying a house is the biggest financial decision most of us will ever make. But we often fall in love with our homes for all the wrong reasons. Then spend a lifetime and every spare penny we have trying to fix them. OK, Renaissance is back. We go up. Oh, my day. We go out. It's massive. And we go under. It is opulence on the highest level. Ah, 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 stop, 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 stop. Oh, this is too big. Most people are chasing the eternal dream of more space. I feel like I'm losing control of the project. But for some, building an extension provides an opportunity to unleash their inner architect. I don't know how we're sticking within budget. We're not sticking within budget. The unknowns are massive. To create radical... Hello, everybody in the house! <laughs> ambitious... It's sharp, it's bold, unapologetic architecture. And sometimes, life-changing builds. I've never seen an extension like that in my life, ever. £28 million. Pounds. Mic drop! Boom! I've been in the property game since I was 22, as both a developer and designer. I'm fascinated by the individual choices people make about their homes. Whether it's a well-tended garden or a window box, we all want a bit of green. In the UK, over five and a half million square metres of land is designated as domestic garden space. So as a nation of growers, no wonder we feel indoor-outdoor living is the way to go. This week, we're following two transformations, one in the suburbs and one in the country, that both aim to make the most of the great outdoors. I've got a lot of respect for people who chase their dreams, even more so when it takes nearly a decade to realise it. This couple that I'm on my way to meet now have done exactly that. They're taking three Cotswold cottages and transforming them into one home with one massive extension. Let's go! In 2019, building contractor Rod and his wife Clarice, a gin distiller, got the keys to these 17th century workers' cottages perched on one of the highest peaks in the Cotswolds. About eight years ago, I was working locally and I walked down here and thought I'd, I'd love to own this one day. Rod and I hadn't been together very long when he literally said, oh, I'm going to take you to this house. I've got big ideas for it. It's a bit creepy. Um, you can kind of imagine a, a murder might have happened, um, but, but try and see past that. Once part of the thriving Upper Dowderswell estate, the cottages have laid uninhabited for the past 20 years. At first, I was sort of like, oh my gosh, it's going to be like living in a cave. Once Rod showed me his plans for the extension in the back of the house, I thought, oh, OK, well, that's, you know, that's more than a compromise. As a building contractor, Rod's used to work in on multi-million pound projects, but this is his most important and personal one to date. Making an exceptional family home for them and their one-year-old daughter, Perdita. So far, Rod and Clarice have only worked on restoring the cottages. It's been very stressful. To fund the project, we've taken a mortgage out on this house here, um, poured all our savings into it. And obviously, at the moment, we're not living here, so we're, we're paying for another property. But six months into the build, they've made great progress. Having cleared the site, we pointed the stonework with traditional lime mortar and repaired the entire slate roof. Now they're embarking on the most complex phase of the build, the extension. Rod and Clarice, it's so exposed up here, guys, man. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. A little bit windy. This is amazing. This is like, when I think of Cotswold, Cottages. This is like the British dream. This is like you yeah. guys are about to live it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the British dream. Cold, check. Windy, check. So, Rod, you've literally been fixated on yeah, this property yeah. for nearly a decade, yeah, basically. Yeah, it just uh, ticked all the boxes, really. 
I can't say I was totally on board from the off. I mean, I said to Rod, I was like, well, if it's full of ghosts, I'm not going in there. So I've got to bring the <laughs> dogs up. And if the dogs are happy in there, then I'm happy in there, because I feel like they know. They know uh, if something's up. And what was the feedback from the dogs? The dogs were happy. They were happy, yeah. 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 <laughs> You found the dream place, it's maybe not Clarice's, but <laughs> if it's already your dream place, why do you need an extension? So, um, the extension needs to go on the rear in order to make it a family home. Without the extension, it would never have flown properly and we never would have taken full advantage of the view. And I think the extension makes the building. Rod and Clarice are adding an ultra-modern 1,200 square foot L-shape extension that will connect the three cottages together. A flat roof rear extension will house the kitchen with floor to ceiling glass doors to bring in natural light. Off this will be a family bathroom and an enormous five metre tall master suite to adhere to a planning condition, ensuring the roof line mirrors the existing cottages. Both spaces will open out onto a terrace, maximising the panoramic views. In its current state, even with the central cottage opened up to the rafters, it's really dark. I can see why you needed to extend it, why you needed to make it more practical. Yeah. Being in this room, I know everything's boarded up, but it does feel like there's not that much light in here and all the window frames are pretty small. Mm. That was one of the main reasons for the extension, really, was to actually allow a load more light into the house. And so in terms of budget, how much is this costing? So the extension budget is 250000 Obviously, there's some high-value items in there. The, the glass, we've gone for the best. Is that eating into the majority of yeah, the budget? Yeah, the glass budget is 50000 50000 for yeah. the glass alone? Yeah. Wow. And, Rod, obviously, you know, this is rare, but you're in a really peculiar position because you're the client and the contractor. <laughs> so how do you deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis? Um... He doesn't. <laughs> it's good because, yes, you get to live in it at the end of it, but it's bad because if there's anything you've done wrong, wrong along the way, it's your problem. You have to live in it. Yeah, it's quite nerve-wracking. Mate, I don't envy you. <laughs> I don't envy you at all. <laughs> And just to add another layer of pressure, there's soon to be a new member joining the family. In an ideal world, you would have liked this property to have already been finished. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we purchased the property two years ago. Um, and at the time, I was pregnant with our first baby. And so in the back of my mind, I always thought, you know, maybe we'll get in before that one's born. Um, it would have been nice. It, I mean, it would have been great. Yeah. Um, but at least, you know, Second time lucky, I think. Hopefully, we'll get in this Fingers time. Crossed. How are we looking, Otherwise, Rod? we're going to have to keep having more babies until the house is finished. <laughs> <laughs> For me, this extension is all about simplicity. With a modern intervention like this, it's all about finding the right balance and respecting the old building. Eighteen months after buying the cottages, the framework for the ultra-modern extension is underway. The new kitchen is formed, and today, nine steel beams are arriving to create the structure for the towering five-metre-tall master bedroom. Everything on the project's riding on today's steel installation, I'm sure it'll be fine. But fine it is not. Why does anyone ever think it will be? There's no turning circle at the house to get the crane into position, so it has to reverse through the entire hamlet. A tricky manoeuvre as the country lanes are barely wide enough to take this huge load. With the crane finally in position, the 1,000 kilo beams can be lifted into place over the 17th century cottages. Keep going. Each beam needs to be millimetre perfect in its installation for Rod to order the glass. And with a 14-week lead time, there's no room for error. The investment is about 50,000 in glass. So obviously, if we get it wrong, it's going to be disastrous. <laughs> Keep going, as you are. 
keep going. And stop there. Hold there for a minute, please. Doing my own build has been an extra level of stress, and I sort of realise being a client is a completely different experience. And now the structure is formed for the five metre tall master bedroom, Claris can finally visualise the enormity of its scale. So what do you think? It's a lot taller than I realised. It's very exciting, it feels a lot more real now. I think the last date you said was the end of May, wasn't it? So yeah, that... so we have early summer. Yeah. Early summer? Yeah. OK. But it'll be fine, it'll be fine. An extension revolution is happening. With 30% of us finding outside space more important than what's inside our homes, one of the main reasons for extending is to connect with the outside. Whether it's in the country, or the city, or suburban Essex. I'm on my way to meet a couple whose day jobs are so serious that their extension is anything but. If anyone's living out there in a fantasy, it's definitely these guys. In May 2020, NHS surgeon Humza and his bond trader wife Parry swap city living for sweet suburbia with this four bed 1930s semi detached house in Loughton, Essex. When I met Perry, she told me that she loves makeup because she was an artist and the only thing she gets to paint is her face. <laughs> and then we said, we said, I thought, well, why don't we give you something else to paint? So, <laughs> so we moved on to our house. The day we walked in for the first viewing of this house, we went upstairs, we saw four very nice sized bedrooms. We saw that it's got an enormous garden. When they started the process of buying the house, the garden was completely overgrown and they didn't realise quite how good it was. We were like, fingers crossed it's not boggy marshland. Let's just chop everything down and see what we're left with. On closer inspection, they had actually won the landscape lottery. What they uncovered was a 300-foot-long secret garden. With the outside underway, it was time to tackle the house. Although the square footage is fine, they wanted to do something more modern and vibrant than the 30s layout and decor had to offer. In between the house and the garden is a peculiar design feature, a hidden treasure I'm calling the view blocker. The outbuilding is a monstrosity left to us by the previous owner <laughs> that we can live without. The answer to their problems? Clearly an extraordinary extension. I've never done anything like this before, ever. Hopefully the end product will be something spectacular. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Really wicked space you've got here, guys. Thank you very much. How did you come across this? We, we are originally from Essex. My okay. husband and I. So, so you guys grew up here? We did. Essex boy, Essex girl. Oi, um, oi. <laughs> <laughs> What we really bought the house for was its garden, and we sort of thought, OK, we can make the house work. For us, the extension is a chance to explore our, you know, our ideas, our dreams. Hamza and Parry plan to optimise the space they do have by opening up the existing layout and adding a cleverly designed 375 square foot extension across the back. It will be clad in charred timber, with two steel arch doors and an inverted arch up and over window seat, connecting the house to the garden. One thing I'm always super interested in is the numbers, the figures, overall budget, what are we talking? At the moment, it's looking like uh, 100, 110. 110? Our oh, life savings. <laughs> yeah, it is. So you, you've literally put your life savings into this? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Everything wow. we've got, yeah. When it comes to all of these amazing plans, right, who gets to say, who has to back down. We have, we've got 
strong personalities, right? So, and I don't like, I don't like um, a lot of things that she loves, and she, <laughs> she despises a lot of things that I love. Typical it's, it's happily married progress, couple. Right? It's a work in progress, so come through. Let's go. One thing they do agree on is reviving an old tradition. We love terrazzo, like, we're crazy about terrazzo. terrazzo. Yeah, yeah, so we want to... The big idea when we started was to bring terrazzo into the kitchen. It's sort of harking back to both our grandfathers, who in the 70s had terrazzo everywhere. Born out of a cost-effective way to reuse marble scraps in 16th century Italy, terrazzo has made a comeback. The hardware in composite, made up of stone chipping set in concrete, is extremely versatile. This extension's facade is entirely clad in a bespoke pattern, not to mention the floors and island top. From speckled hues of pinks and greens to 50 shades of grey, you can dye it in any colour you want and the combinations are limitless. Before Hamza and Parry can dream of such aesthetically pleasing luxuries, they need to deal with a pretty big eyesore. I can see why you need to get rid of this straight away. This needs to go, like, now, literally. It's weird, you're almost in, like, two different worlds, aren't you? From here, you can't really appreciate the house, and when you're in the house, you can't really appreciate, like, the full length of the garden. It just has to go. There's a lot of structural work required here. I hope these extension novices know what they've let themselves in for, especially when it comes to expense. We do want to stay within budget. It's difficult because we enjoy it so much that, you know, you sort of go from, OK, maybe 10% more is OK, maybe 5% more is OK, but... And everywhere. We have to... That's and everywhere. Problem. Everywhere. Oh, we'll get a slightly more expensive floor, or a slightly... Oh, this one's better. Let's... Yeah, do, spend, and, spend, spend. And it just goes. You think all of it is little pennies, but they turn into massive pounds. Humza and Parry are taking 100,000 pounds of hard-earned money and putting it all into this property. It's quite an ambitious dream for the sort of budget that they're working with. This one kind of resonates with me because the property especially reminds me of where I grew up, you know, two really hard-working parents doing everything they could to create the ideal world for me and my siblings. And I'm rooting for them, man. Over in the Cotswolds, it is eight months into the build of Rod and Clarice's ultra-modern L-shaped extension. The steel beams for the bedroom structure are now in place. To comply with planning permission, the height of this room must be the same ridge height as the main house. With some of the block work now complete and the huge height of this room becoming apparent, it looks like Clarice is having second thoughts. My concern with kind of how vast the space is, is it feeling almost too open for a bedroom? So obviously my design thoughts are slightly different to yours. Well, I know. You see things just very much as Here's the design, this is what looks best. I see it as, there's a design, what can you hit your head on? I think when you've got a five metre high ceiling, uh, one of the biggest challenges is making it feel cosy and not cavernous. But then it's quite a challenge to make it feel like a bedroom and somewhere where you're gonna you know, happily drift off in and not feel like you're kind of rattling around in a warehouse. Rod is under pressure for this massive room to work so has roped in an interior designer friend to help him win round his sceptical wife. We're sort of using her almost as a mediator um, to make sure that Rod and I actually come up with constructive ideas instead of just arguing until one of us gives up. <laughs> I'm sort of struggling to imagine how we're going to make that feel cosy and like a bedroom that's not like a kind of cavernous prison cell. Having a bedroom with such a high ceiling is really unusual. Yeah. I think there's several ways to go around it. If you bring the dark low, it sort of brings the eyes back down. Yeah. Um, and so you don't focus on the fact that you're kind of in a big space. It'll feel airy, but it just makes it a little bit more cosy and brings the eye right yeah. back down again. This clever colour trick is a wise move that deceives the eye and won't break the bank. 
probably just had about a half hour chat and made about 20, 30 decisions. It sort of all, brought it all together. So a very productive day. Two months later, the walls for the double height master bedroom are up and the new zinc roof is being fitted. And in classic 2021 fashion, the extension will not be complete without copious amounts of glass. So today on site, we've got the kitchen glazing being fitted. To see it out there will be brilliant. The last few decades have seen a revolution in the materials we use to construct our houses. With massive strides in technology, glass has become increasingly more versatile, from structural facades to suspended swimming pools. It's all about the glazing, baby. Construction glass can withstand a whopping 24,000 pound per square inch. It forms the bones of this record-breaking glass extension erected in Surrey in 2019. Eco-friendly and lightweight, parts of this are quadruple glazed and fitted with an acoustic interlayer to reduce noise pollution. Just look at this 24 meter squared structural glass floor. It weighs in at four and a half tons and is the largest domestic glazed floor in Europe. Back in the Cotswolds, some of the glass is in and the kitchen is shielded from the elements. But Rod and Clarice aren't out of the woods just yet. Rain that has been troubling builds all summer has now really kicked in. And as the windows for the five metre tall master bedroom have not yet arrived, this room is still at the mercy of the great British weather. Across the UK, there's a growing host of homeowners using extensions as a means to imprint their personality on traditional British buildings. Two couples we're following are doing exactly that, creatively enhancing their homes with modern designs to form new layouts and connect with the grey outdoors. Over at Humza and Parry's home in Essex, their dream is to create a modern family-friendly extension that will dramatically change the DNA of their house. But before any building can take place, that ugly garden blocking out building has just got to go. Very quickly, the space is transformed. As the building comes down, the view to the garden is revealed. I can't help but get excited, it looks amazing. All I could see before was this brick wall. Uh, and now I can see through to the back and see some greenery, which is the whole point of this program. Definitely the right decision. The demolition is done. The foundation is poured. Deals are in, and you can now begin to see the outline of the up and over curved glass window, a major design element of this extension, and architect Matty's favorite feature. The up and over glass box has five steel beams and columns just to make it into the shape that we want. This is not your average window. There is a significant amount of structural work compared to a normal roof light. But with work steaming ahead, suddenly it all comes to an unforeseen grinding halt and Humza and Parry are faced with a schedule busting problem. To create the open plan living space Humza and Parry want, an internal wall must come down. I haven't put these beams up yet. Where are these going? These ones, I'm going to follow along there. The wall that divided the old kitchen and living room was thought to be a simple stud wall, but have discovered it's low bearing. So there needs to be a new 
a new sort of steel beam that goes from there to there, and that's going to hold up this corner of the house. Without the wall to bear the weight of the rooms above, unplanned steel beams will need to be inserted. Having moved in with their parents at the start of the build, the prospect of returning home has just been pushed back by several weeks. It's a massive cost because it has a knock-on effect into the rooms by the side. It required excavation of one of the floors and it also required redoing all the pipes and the electrics of the bathroom. We don't have a kitchen. We, we don't really have a proper bathroom. We've got steels going into the atrium of the house, which we weren't predicting before. This is a terrible thing to hear. After being enthusiastic about their new family extension, time and tiredness is taking its toll. I'm very frustrated at the moment. They've cut the pipes here. Frustrating is an understatement. I'd probably say I'm more heartbroken. Um, seeing the costs rise exponentially. This beam still is not in, that's the key move now. Yeah. There's certainly the feeling that I have lost control of the situation and that's not ideal. That's something I'm struggling with, quite frankly, I'm really struggling with. There is always a bright side and my money is on Parry to find it. Of course, you're going to go on an adventure, you're going to get grazed knees. So at the moment, our knees are grazing. But we will get there, and when we do, we'll have travelled a long way. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's the fact. We are very excited, but we're a little bit wounded on our way. Back at Rod and Clarice's L-shaped glass extension in the Cotswolds, the kitchen glass has just gone in, and I'm itching to get a look at those 50 gram panes. OK, now we're talking. This glazing really lives up to the hype. Panoramic vibes, yeah? Oh, wow. So the glass is in. <laughs> It is, yeah. yeah. How are you guys feeling? Was it worth it? We're both really pleased with it. You guys actually. happy with it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. really happy. No, it's better than I thought it would be. Yeah? yeah? Even better than yeah. you thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, It's looking <laughs> phenomenal. I love the fact that you've bonded glass to glass. There's basically no framework. I'm so jealous. And then what, have you guys gone for a change of plan in here? Indoor swimming pool vibes, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today, yeah. All right. Temporary use, yeah. Nice, Bring I can towel. work with that. <laughs> so what's happened? So, um... It basically won't stop raining, but we need two or three days dry weather, and then they'll put the top on the roof. So how has that affected the process? The main thing that hasn't... Obviously, we've got a wet floor. Yeah, um, you was meant to get a screed. So we're going to have to use a different type of screed now, uh, whereas normally we'd have six weeks or so for it to dry. We're going to get a fast drying screed, so it'll goes down and we can lay the floor on, like, three days later. It costs a bit more money, but it'll allow us, once we're in the dry, to speed up the fit out then. How much more are we talking? A uh, couple of thousand. A cu yeah. couple of thousand? Yeah. So the but... budget has gone over by a couple of thousand now? Um, yes. How are you feeling, Clarice? You know, I've said before, I find it hard when Rod goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll be in here in six weeks. And I keep, yeah, I'm looking at the floor and I'm thinking, six weeks? Yeah. You know, we've not, <laughs> even, we've not even chosen paint colours, you know? <laughs> so I do find it hard to believe. Rod and Clarice were meant to be in by around now, and the master bedroom isn't even wind and water tight. But one thing's for certain, they haven't compromised on scale. Oh, my days. Guys, this is a master and a half. So this is what five metres of head height looks like. Yeah. And yeah, it goes well. even beyond this, right? Yeah. So what's going on with here, then? Because this is the ensuite, right? Yeah, so that's going to be the ensuite for this room. Yeah. Essentially, it'll be a box inside the room, though, so it'll have a, a ceiling on it. Um, it won't go up full height. It'll be like a little separate unit within the room. Has this been a discussion between both of you? Yes. What, what, were, the, what were the ideas? Because I'm, I'm assuming there was a couple different ideas of how to yeah, no, approach that. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Heated conversations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am very much in favour of keeping, you know, the ceiling height low in the bathroom, whereas Rod wanted essentially the walls to carry on going up nice. to full height. Also, Rod will tell you that we're never, ever going to use the ceiling of that as any sort of storage, yeah. but we will. <laughs> but you will. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> Whether he wants to or not. When it comes to finishing a building, scheduling is hugely important and there's still so much to do here. 
Glazing is a major milestone for any build, but they've only got half of it here. And where this property is positioned, they're so exposed to the elements and it hasn't stopped raining. They've got a growing family, they want to be in here ASAP, but you know what? If they get a clear run of weather, they might just do it. Back in Essex, Comza and Parry's build is now nine weeks overdue. It's been a tough time for these extension novices. Their schedule was broken by an unforeseen problem with a supporting wall that took weeks to fix. As a result, their budget took a beating along with their enthusiasm. So now I'm back, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to see. Hey, Hamza, Parry. The house is looking amazing. You guys are looking even better. <laughs> I'm feeling tired, I'll tell you what. I'm feeling is it? tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. tell, man. <laughs> <laughs> How are your pockets? Completely empty. Yeah, pretty yeah. broke. Yeah. Um, but we're very, very happy. Yeah, Good. broke but happy. That's not bad. Yeah. It could be worse. Happy skin gang. That's, <laughs> <all>. <laughs> That's what we are. Well, if you're broke, it better have been worth it. I think you're yeah. in for a surprise. All right. Let's go. All right, let's go let's have go. a look. Yeah, yeah. It certainly has been worth it. The whole back of the house has been transformed with a bold and striking sculptural timber-clad extension that effortlessly connects with the outdoors. Wow! Whoa! OK, wow. This is fun. Yeah, it's good, Beautiful. huh? It doesn't look like my home. It looks like something out of a magazine. I think it looks awesome. Beautiful, man. I doubt anybody has anything like this. You guys have been extremely playful with all of the curves and the arches. This is almost a nod to postmodern architecture. I love it. Thank you. As a whole idea of this entire project, the U window and the two arches, we really did want to have fun with curves. Hands down, you guys have met the objective tenfold. I definitely feel that adding the charred timber instead of rendering it, you've added to the playfulness of the extension. And I think it just makes it all the more unique. So this is really an opportunity for us to think outside the box, you know, and I love doing that. We call it the new house. The new house. Because it's like N, N, U. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. New. Yeah. New. New. New house. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond the slimline still arched doors is a new contemporary open plan family space that's minimal and functional. With the new light filled dining area and a bespoke hidden kitchen dressed up with a pop of multicolored terrazzo. Okay, guys, this is really beautiful. And it's clear that you're expressing your inner architect because I can see how these cupboards are flushed into the wall is so seamless and it's a hidden kitchen in every sense of the word, isn't it? That's the exact point. We wanted to hide it. It's completely invisible. So what, talk me through the kitchen then. Where is everything? Yeah, sure. So in front of you, you've got the hob. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got our extractor fan hidden where? in front of it. Pushed down and it sort of appears from nowhere. OK. All right, all right. Anyway, yeah, it's Very like... sleek. We wanted something hidden, so it, it worked in our favour. With the terrazzo, I feel like the balance of it is perfect. You've got just enough of it on this island, which already has such an interesting shape, so it's super fun to look at every single time. Yeah, absolutely delighted. It's given a really different vibe, makes it look interesting. The whole idea uh, behind marrying the kitchen with the, with the design. It's working really well. This up and over window, I'm super jealous. If I could carry this bit of the design and take it to my house. I literally would. <laughs> and I just really love the relationship in this extension between space and shapes. Just... Oh, I think you're hugely generous with your praise, um, but... No, I'm not, man. <laughs> take it. Internalise it. This is great. <laughs> I'll take it. Up on a raised level and tucked away behind a timber screen, the living room is zoned off but still connects to the rest of the extension. Yeah, this is chic. This is really, really nice. We really tried to marry modern and traditional, as you can see. Yeah, and you've been very clever with this angled skylight over here. A lot of people, when they extend, you know, they forget little details like that, and this space can become the darkest room in the house. You guys obviously 
were very, very prudent, and it's such a beautiful design and serves such a great purpose. Yeah, that was one of the problems we had with the old house, but this sort of acts like a well that draws light in, makes everything more warm and welcoming. Yeah. Now tell me about the slats, because for me, this is genius. You've created a division without creating too much of a barrier. You've still got space for the light to come through. All of the benefits of the incredible views and then create a nice flow between the living room and the kitchen is beautiful. It's really nice when the, when the light comes through and you get shadows across the, across the room. Oh, really yeah, insane. I can imagine. In their quest for the perfect family home, Humza and Parry have gone from joy to despair and back again. In my opinion, they've created a bit of magic in Loughton. So guys, the original budget was 110. When we met today, he said you're broke, he said it's all gone. So how much did you spend? We had about a 25% overshoot. So that's about 30 grand then? Roughly, yeah. Yeah? What did that 25% extra go on, would you say? So we had a structural issue. That was a massive extra cost. And then there were little things here and there, you know, you know, tiles, we went over budget, so flooring, we wanted slightly better. I mean, I think the trouble comes when your favourite tile, for example, and your second favourite are only a few pounds apart. But mm. when you add that up everywhere across yeah. the board, yeah. Yeah, and then you scale it by 100, because that's how many you need. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, you're, you're over budget. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate to that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hamza and Perry's budget may have been overshadowed by their meticulous vision, but this was their chance to have fun, and they've definitely done that. This is mischievous and playful and injects joy into their 1930s home, and that's the power of architecture. Perched on one of the highest peaks in the Cotswolds, these three 17th century workers' cottages had laid uninhabited for 20 years. And over the past year, Rod and Clarice have poured their heart, soul and money into restoring and extending them to create an exceptional family home. It takes a bold vision to make a radical change to an iconic Cotswold cottage. So I'm looking forward to seeing if Rod and Clarice have pulled off their ultra-modern extension without losing any of its classic charm or character. When Rod and Clarice bought the cottages two years ago, they were left to rack and ruin. But now they've been lovingly restored and converted into one charming family home. Hello, Hi, Clarice, welcome. Rod, how are you guys? Baby is still not yet here. No, thank God. We got him before baby, yeah. yeah. Mission complete. <laughs> Legend. I must say, it is actually looking like a dream home. It's just really tidy. The still casement windows, the stone. You've just really brought this building back to life. Yeah, I think it had sat here dormant and derelict for long enough, so it was about time it deserved a new lease of life. You guys are kings and queens of the manor right about now. <laughs> this is it's phenomenal. Before they could even start their enormous extension, Rod and Clarice attacked the cottages which had laid derelict for years. This is very much Clarice's style, country chic. But Rod's real vision lay away from the confines of Cotswold stone and into the vast expanse of glass that makes up their modern extension. And the two work in perfect harmony. The new extension on the back is in complete contrast to the old part of the house. By adding this extraordinary 1,200 square foot of new space, Rod and Clarice have opened up the dark cottages and transformed them into a light, bright, contemporary home fit for their growing family. Wow, it's finished. Look at that.
I really like the fact that the roof line on the master bedroom extension is the same line as the cottages. That way, I guess the extension is almost less obvious. It's so lovely. You've created so much space, but it just isn't imposing at all. I think when you get inside, everything links together now, whereas you, so you'll use every bit of space in the house. I know the glass was a lot of the budget, wasn't it? But when you're looking at it from this point of the extension, it, it just seems so worth it. It's so beautiful. Well, this is the thing, you know, we weren't ever planning on kind of doing it up and moving straight on. This is our home, so, yeah, it made sense to invest properly in it. I just can't stop eyeing up that door. I just want to open the whole thing. So when you open it, you've got to walk with it. OK. <laughs> I'll show you how to oh, do I it. I just can't pull it. No, no, you've got oh, to walk okay. along with it, yeah. All right, come on, then. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Flex yeah. your muscles. All right, flex the muscles. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. All right. OK. All right, first one. OK. Steady. Steady, <laughs> steady, steady. OK, yeah, there we go. You really do have to walk with it, don't you? <laughs> the sharp and clever functional design of this super smart extension was always going to be a direct contrast with these 17th century cottages. But once the glass wall has been pushed back, we see just how this house has been transformed from a derelict shell into a beautiful family home. The kitchen space, originally a yard outside the main building, is now the warm, comfortable and cosy heart of this home. Oh, my goodness. Look at this interior. This is nice. Thank you. It's perfect. You've used the space so well. I just really like the seamlessness between the inside and out. When you think about the tiling on the floor, when you think about the Cotswold stone that you've got on the walls, you can walk inside and out and you kind of feel like you're in the one single space. I think that's where our two styles come together. Yeah. Because Rod's much more into the kind of contemporary um, and sort of lighter style of things, whereas I do quite like the old school kind of country cottage vibe. So we've got this very beautifully designed kitchen here. And then this is your second kitchen, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. So what, have you guys been cooking? Are you guys big cooks then? Good question. Um, so, I've always wanted to cook. But always never, wanted we're to, gonna, yeah. okay. We're going to gonna have to learn. Quickly. And just actually start yeah. using the yeah. appliances, yeah. yeah. Use all the toys, yeah. yeah. Work out how to turn them on. <laughs> and then, am I right in thinking that's your family bathroom? Yeah. Behind the cladding? Yeah. Yeah, we tried to hide it a little bit because I think it doesn't always feel the kind of coolest having a bathroom straight off a kitchen. That is totally my thing. It's, it's a signature that I try and put in every property that I work in. You've got lots of hidden doors. Oh, there's yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, are yeah, more. Yeah, we have yeah. three. All right, let's go. To the bedroom! <laughs> Ever since it went up, how the five-metre-high bedroom suite was going to look has been a concern to everyone, including me. Well, we shouldn't have worried. The very clever two-colour idea brings the eye down away from the ceiling. The bespoke wardrobes that line the walls and panelling that hides the ensuite help envelop the bed bring a warmth to a voluminous space. You guys have literally got cosy and grand in one. This is the hardest room to imagine before it was done. Um, so actually, yeah, I'm slightly surprised. I think you don't even really notice the ceiling height. You don't notice at all because the way you've used the paint very cleverly, my eye is focused on the light green. It's like lowered my gaze by yeah. doing that, which is great. So guys, I remember, at the time, en suite in the master bedroom, do we keep the ceiling height low or do we go all the way up? What's happened? Because I can't see an en suite at the moment. I feel like it's hidden again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's somewhere in the secret wall. Once the wardrobes were being built in, it just made sense to keep the en suite the same height as those. It's actually a nice illusion. And the fact that this extension frames this view in a way that the original cottage could have never done. Glass, glass, glass. Yes. Glass, glass, glass. I love it, I love it, I love it. Rod and Clarice have the best of both worlds here. Classic 17th century cosy cottage charm combined with a slick, light-filled modern addition that extends into nature, optimising this incredible Cotswold setting. So it's complete. It didn't get done in the time you hoped it would, but it's finished and it looks Incredible. How do you guys feel about it? I think day by day it almost killed us. Um, 
but moving in here now, having the view, being able to appreciate all the hard work that's gone into it, now it feels worth it. I, th I think as well, doing your own project, emotion comes into it. Yeah. yeah. When emotion comes in, that changes the whole yeah. dynamic of a project. Yeah. Blood, sweat and tears has gone into it, definitely. And so, guys, talk to me about budget, because that's what I really want to get into. The budget initially for the extension was 250 right? Mm. So, did you guys come in on budget? We went over by about 25000 OK. But it was all in structural work. We knew we had to do some work. We probably underestimated the amount of engineering. When you're working on a project for yourself and for mm. your family, yeah. it takes so much out of you. Yeah. But you've done such a great job, and you should be proud of it. And Right now, if I was you, I'd just be celebrating, because this is amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we, we, we're not planning on going anywhere <laughs> for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Rod set his eyes on this place nearly a decade ago, and what he and Clarice have managed to achieve is simple, sophisticated architectural design at its best. And not only that, it's a beautiful family home.